Well, my young students of history and Christianity, welcome back once again. I sure am glad that uh, I can read this for you, uh, this book that was compiled by Dr. J.T. Headley and published in 1864, The Chaplains and Clergy of the Revolution. Let me uh, jump right in here, because this is chapter 9, and this is about Ezra Stiles. And here's what we're going to listen for in this chapter. And these are the important parts. His prophecy respecting the colonies in 1760. President of Yale College. Chancellor Kent's eulogy of him. His patriotism. Keeps a diary of revolutionary events. His death. I, I just before we get in, I, I do have to make a commentary, as you know, I always have to say something, uh, is that, I, you know, what happened to Yale College? What happened to Harvard? What happened to Princeton? What happened to all of these places where we had such phenomenal men? And what happened to the so-called Christian colleges today? Your parents, children, I hope, will work with you and choose extremely wisely to find a place that is solid in biblical truth and solid in patriotism. Because that's what we need. That's what we need while we live on this earth and we are subjects to the King of King Jesus as he said to pray in our Father that the kingdom come, his will be done, the Father's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that Jesus is the king of heaven and earth. So, you know what? That's something we got to pay attention to. And hopefully you, your parents can find a place to educate you where the king is the king of heaven and earth. So with that, let's get on to uh, Dr. Stiles here. Ezra Stiles, who succeeded Dr. Daggett as president of Yale College, forms a third in this illustrious trio of patriotic presidents that Yale can boast of. Wow, there it is. Yale can boast. So we had, this is the third of all of these three chapters. So that would be chapters 17, 18, and 19 of three illustrious presidents. Okay, back to this. His far-reaching mind as early as 1760 seemed to foresee the struggle which would eventually take place between the colonies and England. In a sermon he delivered at that time on the reduction of Canada by the English, he used the following language, quote, It is probable that in time there will be formed a provincial confederacy and a common council standing on free provincial suffrage, and this may in time terminate in an imperial diet, when the imperial dominion will subvert as it ought in election. End quote. He lived to see this prophecy fulfilled in the Continental Congress. The late Chancellor Kent, one of his pupils, thus speaks of his patriotism. And this is Chancellor Kent's quote. President Stiles' zeal for civil and religious liberty was kindled at the altar of the English and New England Puritans, and it was animating and vivid. A more constant and devoted friend to the revolution and independence of the country never existed. He had anticipated it as early as 1760, and his whole soul was enlisted in every measure which led on gradually to the formation and establishment of the American Union. The frequent appeal which he was accustomed to make to the heads and hearts of his pupils concerning the slippery path of youth, the grave duties of life, the responsibilities of men, and the perils and hopes and honors and destiny of our country will never be forgotten by those who heard them, and especially when he came to touch 
as often did with a master's hand and prophet's fire on the bright vision of the future prosperity and splendor of the United States. End quote. Ezra Stiles was born at North Haven, Connecticut, December 10th, 1727, and died in 1795, and hence had already reached his three score and ten. He kept a voluminous diary during the Revolution, which is still preserved in manuscript in the library of Yale College and contains many useful and interesting facts connected with those times. The end of the chapter. So I have to tell you, and those that are listening, is that I went to Yale's library, and it is a fact that his writings are still there. They're archived. And I started to read them, and oh my goodness gracious, my children, uh, it, 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 the modern historians lie to us. The modern Christian historians lie to us. So I can understand why the modern churches are so confused the way they are, because we are deceived even within our own pulpits. Reading Dr. Stiles' accounts is, is just phenomenal, educational, reminding that our Christian heritage is one to fight for liberty and against tyranny and despotism, and to raise you, my children, up to be men and women that will understand God's truth and know how to act in your culture and in your political positions within life, starting in your families. So I would encourage everyone, everyone out there to go look up Dr. Stiles and some of his writings about the revolution. And I think it's time we get our heads back on straight. So we'll get on to the next chapter, which is chapter 20. Joel Barlow.